let's talk about how to treat your menopausal bleeding, okay? Bleeding in menopause can be a nuisance and sometimes dangerous. Here's what I do to treat menopausal bleeding in my patients. First, I have to assess why you're bleeding. So after asking lots of questions about the character of your bleeding, I'll do a pelvic exam. I check to be sure the vagina looks healthy. A thin, atrophic vagina will tear and bleed during intercourse. Then using a speculum, I can visualize the cervix. Sometimes a polyp, which is a little growth sticking out of the cervix, can cause a little bit of bleeding. Cervicitis and inflammation of the cervix caused by an infection or abnormal cell growth can also cause bleeding. According to what I see, I may do a pap smear, collect a culture to rule out infection, or take a biopsy. Then I remove the speculum and palpate the uterus and the ovaries. Uterine fibroids, which are benign growths in or on the uterus, can cause menopausal bleeding too. And I can usually feel fibroids through a pelvic exam. If nothing is obvious on the pelvic exam, I'll order a pelvic ultrasound to assess the thickness of the uterine lining. Now, if your uterine lining is too thick, I may do what's called a medicinal DNC using progestin for 10 days to induce a bleed and then recheck your pelvic ultrasound. It may take two or three courses of progestin to thin out the lining. This is about the only time I prescribe progestin, never for hormone replacement therapy, as progestins increase clotting. In fact, any steroid hormone taken orally for more than six months will increase your risk of blood clots. That's why I only prescribe transdermal or sublingual under the tongue bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. But in the case of a woman with postmenopausal bleeding, I found progestins to be the most effective at inducing a therapeutic shedding of their thick endometrium. If your thick lining looks suspicious or does not shed adequately with the medicinal DNC, then it's time to do an endometrial biopsy. Again, using a speculum, a thin tube is placed inside the cervix all the way up into the uterus and a tiny bit of tissue is extracted using suction. The tissue is sent to pathology to be evaluated for endometrial hyperplasia, which is an overgrowth of the uterine lining, versus endometrial dysplasia, which is abnormal cells versus endometrial cancer. Sometimes the biopsy comes back as proliferative endometrium, meaning just overgrown. Proliferative tissue needs to be shed either with the medicinal DNC, like I just explained, or surgical DNC, which is an outpatient procedure in which a gynecologist will dilate the cervix and introduce a large extraction tube to scrape the entire lining of the uterus and send specimens for pathology to rule out cancer. Now, sometimes the biopsy comes back as disordered endometrium, meaning thin and fragile. This usually means you need more estrogen and progesterone to stabilize the lining of the uterus. If fibroids are causing the uterine bleeding, time is usually healing. That's because fibroids tend to shrink after menopause. Unless you're taking hormone replacement therapy, then fibroids will remain active. Your hormones will have to be adjusted to find the, just the right dose that keeps your fibroids from growing and your bleeding to a minimum. Uterine polyps, which are usually benign growths inside the uterus, often make the lining look thicker than it really is on the pelvic ultrasound, and they can cause bleeding too. Again, time can heal polyps unless you're taking hormone replacement therapy, which will need to be adjusted. Now, if adjusting your hormones does not help the bleeding, then a progestin IUD can be in placed within the uterus. Progestin IUDs are used in menopausal women to provide local progestin to stabilize the lining of the uterus, eventually drying up the bleeding. Unlike systemic oral progestin, there's no danger of blood clots with the progestin IUD. I know this can sound scary. Women going through menopause with issues like bleeding need support. They need education and emotional support to get through this challenging time. That's why I started a hormone support group to help women like you. Just sign up for your hormone reboot training and you will get access to the hormone support group. It's free. What about natural means to stop uterine bleeding? Well, that's tough because few herbs are powerful enough to stabilize your uterine lining. And if you're bleeding, you need to get a thorough workup like what I've described to rule out uterine cancer before trying any alternative treatment. I have found that basic hormonal imbalance can be corrected in menopausal women by supporting their hypothalamus but it takes time, usually months, and only after thoroughly investigating why you're still bleeding in menopause do I recommend hypothalamus support.